In this video, we're going to go over the last two pages in our Functions Operations pamphlet, pages 12 and 13. It's over discontinuities and function patterns. The three types of discontinuities. What are holes, removable discontinuities, and how are they found? Holes are points where functions do not equal a limit as x approaches that number. It is found by factoring. Any factors that cancel out produces holes. What are vertical asymptotes? Infinite discontinuities. And how are they found? VAs are dashed vertical lines. The function approaches but never touches. They are found after finding holes by setting the denominator equal to zero. X equals a vertical asymptote. Were horizontal asymptotes, HA, and how are they found? HAs are dashed horizontal lines. The function approaches, but never touches. They are found after finding holes by taking the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. We have three different cases for this. So we have the leading term at the top, AX to the nth power, and we have the leading term in the denominator, BX to the rth power. If the degree is the same in both the numerator and the denominator, you'll have a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b. You will not have a horizontal asymptote if n is greater than r, and then you'll have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 if n is less than r. The good thing to do for these is to just always have the same degree here and put those placeholders where needed. For example, if we had x squared at the top and 3x at the bottom, we'll put a plus 0x squared down here. And then if we had like 3x up here, x squared down here, you'd want to do the same thing. What are oblique asymptotes, OA, and how are they found? OAs are dashed curves or slants that the function approaches but never touches. They are the quotient of the expression when there is a remainder. Now, one thing about horizontal asymptotes, the function can actually touch it in the middle. So horizontal asymptotes is basically talking about the end behavior. Name the holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes for the following functions. So we have u squared minus 4 over u plus 2 equals y. The first thing we would do is factor it. So this is a difference of squares, so we have u minus 2 and u plus 2. The u plus 2s cancel, so you have a whole at u equals negative 2. You set this part equal to 0. The next one we have x to the third power plus 5 all over x squared plus 4 equals y. For this one we're going to want to do long division to find the quotient. So we have x and then minus x cubed plus 0x squared minus 4x. So that gives you negative 4x, bring down the 5. 
And this one would be uh, the remainder because you wouldn't be able to divide negative 4x by x squared without going over because it's already too small. So this is your remainder. Now we're not concerned with the remainder. We only want the quotient as long as the remainder is not zero, which it's not. So the oblique asymptote is at y equals x. Let's look at the next one. D, 5d minus d over d to the fourth power plus 4 equals y. So um, we have 0d to the fourth power up here and then 1d to the fourth power down here. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's look at the next one. 7t minus 5 over 3t minus 6 equals y. Uh, there's nothing that cancels out here, so there's no holes. Your vertical asymptote, we're going to set this equal to 0. So t equals 2. So we have a vertical asymptote at t equals 2. And the horizontal asymptotes will take the leading term of each, and they have the same degree, so we could just say that it's 7 over 3. Okay, for the next one, the holes, um, let's factor out the denominator. It's a difference of squares. Uh, we have j minus 1 and j plus 1. The j plus 1s cancel out, so you have a hole at j equals negative 1. You have a vertical asymptote. We set this equal to 0 at j equals 1. And then you're left with um, the leading term is 4j, and then we have 1j. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So you have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. And let's look at this last rule on this page. 2x cubed plus 6x divided by 2x parentheses x minus 1 equals y. Let's factor this out. So we can factor out a 2x from the numerator, and we're left with x squared plus 3. Now, the two x's cancel out, so you have a hole at x equals 0. You have a vertical asymptote, we set this equal to 0, so it'd be x equals 1. And then you're going to use um, synthetic or long division to find the oblique asymptote. Let's use synthetic on this one. So the zero right here, the vertical asymptote is 1, and then you have 1x squared, 0x, and 3 constants. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, your remainder is 4. So our oblique asymptote is at y equals 1x plus 1. Page 13, function patterns. So let's look at this table, and we're going to determine if it has a common ratio or a common difference. From 1 to 2, we add 1. 2 to 3, add 1. 3 to 4, add 1. That's a common difference, so I'm going to put 1D there for first common difference. Let's look at the y values. From 5 to 10, you add 5. 10 to 15, add 5. 15 to 20, also add 5. That's also a first common difference. If you have a first common difference and a first common difference, you have y to the 1 over 1 power. That's, that's just y to the... That, that's just a linear function. So the type right here is linear. If you were to be more generic, you could also just say power. 
we have common differences with both the input and output uh, numbers. Those are power functions. Let's look at the next one. 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4. You're adding 1 again each time. So that's a first common difference. Now for 1 to 4, you add 3. 4 to 9, add 5. And then 9 to 16, add 7. It's not a first common difference, but let's see about the next one. 3 to 5, add 2. 5 to 7, add 2. We have the same number here, so we have a common second difference. So we take the differences of the first set of numbers, and then we take the differences of those uh, numbers that we just got, and that would be second common difference. So the type here would be quadratic. And again, that's a power function. If we got a third common difference, that would be cubic, and then and so on. Now let's look at the next one. 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. That's still adding 1 each time. So that's first common difference. Now, obviously it looks like we're not adding the same number here. So let's try multiplying. 10 times 10 equals 100. 100 times 10 equals 1,000. And 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. So that's a first common ratio. And I'll put an R for that. Uh, with a common difference for the inputs and a common ratio for the outputs, that is an exponential function. Now this one and this one, the only difference is that you switch the x and y, so it's the inverse. The inverse of an exponential is a logarithmic function. So we have first common ratio for the inputs and first common difference for the outputs. Okay, let's look at this one. One, two, four, eight. Um, with this, we're multiplying by twos. On this one, we're multiplying by threes. So we have a first common ratio and a first common ratio. Um, there's not really a kind of name for this kind of type, but you'll most likely never see it. Let's go ahead and just call it a logarithmic exponent. Now, by looking at these tables, if we were to switch the uh, input and output for the quadratic, that would be square root. So this would be square root. And that's the inverse of a quadratic. And then here's a table at the bottom that <clears throat> basically shows you what those um, constants would be. So if we have a constant difference and a constant difference, that's going to be a power function. A constant difference and a constant ratio would be exponential. Constant ratio and constant difference would be logarithmic. And again, common ratio and common ratio, we, we won't have that. All right, keep working on your function operations uh, practice worksheets and then move on to the next section.